Hey, Craig Cottle from Nature Reliance School, guest instructor with DansDepot.com, coming at you today. Out here on a fine morning in early spring in Kentucky. What I wanted to do today, because we use our knife so much, is talk about some basic knife safety. And today I'm going to be using a Mora knife that Dan's Depot sells. So, glad you're with us. So the main thing we need to understand about a knife, for those of us that are beginners, is that there's a couple of dangerous parts of this knife. The, this side of the knife and this end of the knife. So we want to make sure that no matter what we're doing that we're keeping those away from our body. There are some tasks that are much easier done with those towards our body and I'll demonstrate how to do those in an even safer manner. But what I thought I'd do is just show some common tasks that we might be doing out here practicing or, or actually in a survival situation and we'll uh, show you how to safely do those so that you don't have a situation where you have to administer self first aid. So, um, you're going to hear this crow throughout this video because when I showed up on the scene here today, he was feeding in this area, so he's kind of upset with me. Uh, I'm not going to be here long. I'm going to get this knife video done, and I'll get out of his way so he can go back to doing what he's doing. Uh, I like to use the analogy of using a knife to use an, uh, open a jelly jar. Okay, so if you take a, a jar of jelly out of the refrigerator and somebody's left some jelly around the rim, it's real sticky. Uh, you don't pull that jelly jar out and hold it away from your body, but rather you pull it close to your body and you open that jelly jar because it's really tight. Okay? The reason we do that is because the closer we get to our body, the stronger we are. And out here, we're isolating some muscles and we're somewhat weak. Same thing always happens with people, and this is one of the easiest ways for people to injure themselves, is that they pull their knife out and they get in a situation where they're trying to cut something and they're real close to the body and this is a dangerous situation here so one of the main things you want to do is obviously get the knife close to your body but just make sure that that knife is going away from you when you cut it seems to this injury right here where you cut yourself across the chest or the belly is one of the most common injuries for beginners and that that you want to cut something and use strength so it gets too close to the body so again simply cutting string we're going to cut such a way that it is away from our body. Okay. A lot of times what you'll do is you'll want to get in a situation where you want to steady whatever it is you're cutting with your thumb. This again is another situation where you are putting the edged weapon towards your thumb and that's a dangerous situation. So you don't want to be in a situation like this. And I see this most often. Um, where people are trying to cut a branch and they put their thumb directly over top of the blade and they'll spin the branch and they'll end up slicing their thumb. Okay, so simply put, you can do something more similar like this, but you want to make sure your thumb is offset from the blade itself so that you can cut a direct circle. And if your thumb slips, it slips off to the side of the knife itself. So even safer than that is just simply hold the blade away from you and twist the stick put it down on a log and twist the stick and then you can simply break the stick in such a way that it's easy to break so the other thing that is very common is when people are going to cut and maybe uh, shave something like shave the bark off this branch and or uh, try to sharpen this to a point even just in a whittling situation Again, it's easy to want to do something where you're doing something like this because you have a lot of power because you're using your core body strength to be able to use this weapon, this knife. So, again, one of the things that you can do to assist yourself is uh, push this blade away from you, but if you need a little help with strength, then put that thumb on there, and it's going to be the added strength that you need to make, in this particular instance, a, just a simple fire stick and I'm not had to keep the point of the blade towards me or the sharp side of the blade towards me at any point in time. A couple other general safety considerations on how to have a knife is that you definitely don't want to take your knife and lay it on the ground. Uh, one of the things that I do like about these these more knives here for beginners is that they're bright orange and they're easy to see not only on the sheath, the scabbard itself, but also on the handle so they're easy to see and it's not easy to lose. But really, uh, when it comes down to it, you shouldn't be leaving your knife laying around anyway. So 
don't get in a habit of even when you're sitting around uh, a campfire working on skills of laying your knife down while you're practicing and working. What you should be doing is each time sheathing and resheathing your knife in its case, in this case, in this particular case, a hard case or its leather sheath, whatever it might be, so that you always have that knife on your side and it's always in a safe position so nobody that's around you can stumble upon it and you yourself can't stumble upon it. Another thing to consider, and again, this is this is all about knife safety, is because we need to be practicing with our tools, whatever those tools are going to be. Um, if you're around other people when you're out practicing, one of the things that we do in our classes, and I learned this from my dad, uh, he he did something similar to this when he was in basic training and was cleaning dishes, and that was uh, when they would clean dishes and the sharp knife would go into the pot where uh, there were suds they would always say sharp knife and that was to alert everybody that in that dishpan where you could not see it because of the suds of the soap was a sharp knife. Same thing we do in our classes and something I recommend to a lot of people like when my son and I are out working and practicing on skills anytime we draw our knife or we pull out a machete or we pull out a hatchet we say tool in the air or sharp knife in the air. That lets in this particular case, if I'm working and I'm getting ready to pull my hatchet out, my son knows that I have pulled a tool out that's sharp and he is aware of it. What that simply does is make everybody aware of what's going on around you. And so in case I pull out a tool and I start to use it and he's directly behind me, I should be aware of that anyway, but it also, I should be aware he's behind me. But he should be uh, made known and made aware that this tool is getting ready to be employed and that way he doesn't walk into the path of where I'm using it. So there you go. That's some brief safety tips on how to use a knife and actually any edged weapon uh, and or tool. So I say weapon because these things can be utilized as a weapon and you need to consider them as such. You need to keep them in a safe manner and hold them in such a way that you don't hurt yourself and others. So make sure that you're uh, following along with any safety tips that you can come up with on your own to make sure that you and those around you are safe and that way you'll have a good time out in the woods. So until next time, I hope to see you on or off the trail.